Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November here from Survival Tech Nord. I'm out here doing a field test with a couple of pieces of new gear. For this video, we're going to focus on the Chameleon CHA Spike. It's an add-on component for the Hybrid Mini and Hybrid Micro series of broadband matching transformers. So, we're going to set it up. We're going to try to get a contact and uh, see if this actually works. So stick with me. Let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign narrative. So this was an impromptu video. I was actually out recording material for another video that I'm working on. And this was an unexpected result. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. This time, for transporting the radio gear, I'm using a Hogloff snowboarding day pack. It's got straps on either side for mounting the snowboards to the pack, but they work very well for holding the antennas or tripod or whatever else I'm carrying. First to come off the pack is the Mill Whip and Mill EXT, that's the impasse and the extension. Inside the pack, I keep my Yaesu FT817ND, my LDG Z817 tuner, and the Hybrid Micro and CHA Spike. And here's your first look at the Chameleon CHA Spike. The CHA Spike is a 15 inch or 38 centimeter stainless steel threaded spike, offering additional deployment options for the Chameleon Impasse or Hybrid Mini or Micro series of broadband matching transformers. Now this is the very first time I'm deploying it for real and I'm hoping the ground isn't still frozen. I nearly forgot the Hybrid Micro but let's go ahead and put that on top. Here you'll notice I'm not using the thumb screw to mount the counterpoise. Personally, I like to put the counterpoise wire between the hybrid micro and the base of the spike. This way I don't have to worry about fiddling with or losing that screw because I'm wearing gloves. Now I'll tighten down the hybrid micro, compressing the ring from the counterpoise system between it and the spike. Next we're going to put up the mill EXT or the extension. One of my most asked questions is should I invest in the mill EXT or not? Honestly I'm not comfortable telling people what they should or shouldn't buy. What I can say is I want to have the longest most efficient antenna I can uh, for the band that I'm working with and that's especially true on 40, 60 and 80 meters. We simply need to adapt to the conditions that were given on a given day of deployment. Alright, next we'll attach the mill whip to the mill EXT. I like to do this with the sections collapsed makes everything a lot easier to manage and it uh, prevents me from poking one of my dogs in the eye with the end of the whip. This is just a practical field note but one of the ways I decide whether or not an antenna system is suitable for field deployment is if I can deploy it the first time around while wearing gloves. It's even more attractive if it doesn't require any tools. Anyway, now we can slot all of these sections together, then take a step back to see what it all looks like. For those of you wondering why the antenna is leaning over like that, you may pay attention to the audio. We have quite a heck of a wind coming from the northeast right now. That's the reason the antenna is leaning over. Normally it just stands straight up even with the extension. But I think now we go ahead and deploy the counterpoise wire. For those of you new to field communications, 
and you're using a single wire counterpoise. Here's a little trick that you might try to get better performance out of your antenna. When you're laying out your counterpoise wire, lay it out in the direction of the operator you're trying to work. Performance is always best in the direction of your counterpoise wire on a single counterpoise system. Another counterpoise note is unrolling just enough for the band that you're working at the moment, a quarter wavelength on 20, 30, 40, whatever. Now we're going to install the coax cable, plug that into the Z817 uh, tuner, and fire up the 817. Now, about an hour and a half before I shot this video, I heard from the home station that Radio 112 Mike Sierra was operating on 20 meters. So my goal was to get out here, MAM Portable, and see if I could make a quick QSO with that station. Romeo 112 Mike Sierra is a special event station from Moscow, and that's about 1,200 kilometers from me. By the time I got out there, set up and ready to operate, he was just finishing up a QSO with the Sierra Victor station. Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November Stroke Papa. Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November Stroke Papa. Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra, please, again. Yes, Oscar, Oscar, Hotel, Hotel, number 8, number 8, Sierra, Sierra, Tango, Tango, November, November, Stroke Papa, Field Portable Station, Portable Station, QSL? QSL, QSL, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra, Tango, November, please. Outstanding. Thank you very much, sir. You are 5x9 plus in Kilo Papa 25, Quebec, Charlie. Your name again, please. Your name, sir. Victor Alpha Lima. Thank you very much, Victor. This is Julian, Joliet Uniform, Lima, India, Alpha November 73, and good luck. Thank you very much, 73. Good luck. And honestly, guys, that was it. I wanted to try this with a voice mode because it's more difficult. Next time we'll try with digital modes, but uh, we already know it's going to work. Don't forget to check out survivaltechnology.net, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November.org. Subscribe to the channel, and if you like what I'm doing, share this video with someone who you think might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching.